Good morning. This next installment in the acid-base equilibria series is covering salt hydrolysis. Students will be able to identify a given solution as being a solution of a monoprotic weak acid or base, including salts in which one ion is a weak acid or base, calculate the pH and concentrations of all species in solution, and or infer the relative strengths of acids or bases from a given equilibrium concentration. By definition, a salt is an ionic compound. When dissolved in water, it will break up into its ions, which can behave as acids or bases if it is coming from a weak acid or a weak base. You can imagine that the salt being formed from the neutralization reaction between the acid and a base. So we have in our system any acid, HA, reacting with any base, BOH, producing a salt which would be Ba, the metal cation from the base with the anion coming from the acid. Again, positive first, negative second. So I have the Ba, and then I'll be left with the H2O. So we'll now discuss the conditions on which the salt will be either acidic, basic, or neutral. When we have the salt of a strong acid and a strong base reacting together, it will create a neutral solution. Again, you can take the salt that we see here in either of these cases. I'll just do one with the KCl. When we look at the KCl, you can imagine that that would be the reaction between hydrochloric acid, again, the anion being Cl, and KOH for the cation coming from the base. When I look at these two things, I know the product would be KCl and H2O from that reaction. Since HCl is a strong acid and the KOH is a strong base. We know that the salt in this instance will be neutral. When we look at this, the KCl would dissociate into K plus and Cl minus ions. And if you recall from our previous lesson, when we were looking at the strength of the acid or the base, we can compare the conjugate acid or base to the strength of water and the conjugate base of a strong acid was weaker than water. So the Cl minus will not be able to take a hydrogen from the water to produce HCl. That will not take place. So therefore, no reaction would occur with the anion, making it a neutral salt. So that should have a pH of approximately 7. When we have a basic solution that is being formed, that is going to be the anion of the salt is the conjugate base of the weak acid. And that will be one in which the conjugate base of that weak acid would be stronger than water and will attract a proton. So if we look at NaF, for example, here, we know that the NaF, that would dissociate into Na plus and F minus ions. So when I look at this here, I can see that the reaction would have been HF plus NaOH forming NaF and H2O. Now, HF, that would be a weak acid. NaOH, strong base. And so I would end up with a basic salt. So just remember, strong wins out. So if I have a combination of strong versus weak, whatever is the strong, this salt is going to be of the same type of basicity or acidity as that. The reaction that we would want to focus on, so the main reaction when we place that salt in water, we would take the F minus ion. We have plenty of extra waters that have not had any attachment to a NaOH or a HF molecule, and we can have that react. It will take away one of the hydrogens and bring it back to the parent acid, HF, and then I would be left with the OH minus. So that's why, again, it's producing the OH minus in solution by removing a hydrogen from the water and leaving it with the OH minus. That is why the main reaction here with this will create a basic solution. 
This is by far one of the most important concepts as we move forward because it's going to help us when we're trying to find the pH of the solution at the equivalence point for titrations. And it's also going to be a main player when we're talking about buffers. So please, please, please make sure that you understand this concept backwards and forwards. No pun intended. So when we look at our last example, if we have an acidic solution that is formed, that's when the cation of the salt is the conjugate acid of a weak base. So when I look at the NH4Cl, that would be the reaction between NH3 and HCl to produce the NH4Cl. Now, ammonia, weak base, hydrochloric acid, strong acid. So in this case, I know that I would have an acidic salt. Now, when we look at this particular reaction, the NH4Cl, I'm just going to draw it in over here, that would dissociate into NH4 plus and Cl minus. Again, the ion that is coming from the strong acid is weaker than water, so it will not attract a proton. However, the NH4 plus, that will be our main reaction. So I'm going to write that right here. Our main reaction in this case. I would have the NH4 plus, I would have the H2O, and now in this instance, the water is going to act as the base, the NH4 plus would act as the acid, and it is going to give away one of its hydrogens, so it's going to return to the parent molecule, which always happens for the salt. It will always go back to the parent acid or base that it started with that was weak, so I'd have the NH3, and I would end up with H3O plus. So again, because it's forming the H3O plus, I know that the salt will be acidic. We can do a lot of calculations to figure out the pH of a salt solution. The main concept that you need to understand is that the Kw is equal to the Ka times the Kb. If you have a basic salt, you're going to use the Kb. If you have an acidic salt, you're going to use Ka. I wanted to take a moment here just using a simple reaction to show you guys how this all relates together. So I'm going to use a parent acid and a salt, both of them undergoing the uh, ionization reaction. They're both weak systems, so they're going to have the equilibrium that's taking place. So I'm going to look at the reaction here with HClO and also NaClO. We want to have a strong component, so I want to take the cation for the salt. I want to take the cation coming from a strong base, so the easiest thing to do is always use an alkali metal. So I'd have NaClO, that guarantees also that it is soluble. So when I look at the reactions here, so for the HClO going into water, that would form H3O plus and the ClO minus ions. And when I look at the NaClO, the first thing I want to do is look at its ionization. So I'd have the NaClO, it would dissociate into Na plus and ClO minus ions. Once again, the Na plus being that strong base uh, cation, it will not react with any water molecules to form NaOH. So I would focus on the ClO minus. So I'd have ClO minus plus the H2O forms in this case, the HClO and OH minus. So if I were to take each of these equilibrium reactions, call this number one and number two, and I write out the equilibrium expressions. So for the first reaction where we have the HClO, I would have the Ka for the reaction. Again, it's producing H3O plus. That Ka would be equal to the H3O plus concentration times the ClO minus concentration divided by the HClO concentration. Now, when we look at the second expression, the one where we're using the ClO minus ion from the salt, 
Notice now it's producing OH, so I'm going to use the KB. And I would have for that reaction HClO concentration times OH minus divided by the ClO minus concentration. Now, here's where this relationship up top comes into play. Because I have the KW equaling KA times KB, and I have this as my equivalent for KA, and this as my equivalent for KB, I'm going to substitute those into that expression. So I have the KW would equal the concentration of H3O plus times the ClO minus over the HClO. Again, that referencing the KA part. And I'm going to multiply that times the KB, which we said was the HClO times the OH minus divided by the ClO minus, that being the KB. So when I multiply those two things together, I hope you notice one key thing. I have ClO minus in the numerator, ClO minus in the denominator. Those will cancel. HClO numerator, HClO denominator. They cancel. Now, if you think about our original KW expression, we had H3O plus times OH minus equaling the KW. Well, notice what we have right here. H3O plus OH minus. Nothing else. So when we look at that, I'm going to cross those out with a different color so you guys see that. So that's where our relationship comes from. So it makes it really easy when we want to figure out what the KB would be for a particular salt. So for instance, if we would look at the HClO Ka, the Ka for HClO is somewhere approximately around like 3 times 10 to the negative 8th power. So if I want to solve for the Kb for the ClO minus, I would just simply take the Kw and divide it by the Ka. So I'd have 1 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 3 times 10 to the negative 8th. And when we do that, we end up with approximately 3.3 .3 times 10 to the negative 7th. And that would equal the KB. So that would be the starting value that I would put in to my expression over here. So let's just do a quick summary of the salt hydrolysis types. Part of it is just simply being able to recognize a salt as being acidic, basic, or neutral. And then you have other problems where you have to actually go through and do the math to calculate concentrations and pH. A lot of your multiple choice questions on the AP exam covering this concept will just be to identify whether or not the salt is basic, acidic, or neutral. So if we have a cation, again, that part is coming from we'll call that the parent base, and then the anion is coming from the parent acid. So we want to just simply be thinking about those things in terms of whether the parent acid or base was strong or weak. So if I have a neutral solution, then that would mean that I would have, again, that strong base reacting with a strong acid, so I'd have a neutral salt. If I have Again, the neutral part, that would mean that it would be coming from a strong base. The conjugate base of a weak acid, obviously that tells me I have a weak acid. So strong base plus a weak acid means that I have a basic salt. So you can just simply look again at the two ions, determine what it's coming from by adding either the H plus to the anion or the OH minus to the base. If I have a conjugate acid of a weak base, then obviously that would be a weak base. Neutral, that would mean that it would be a strong acid, so I'd have an acidic solution. The last situation which we haven't talked about is one that we really don't get into very often, uh, where you have a conjugate acid of a weak base. So basically I have a weak base plus a weak acid, 
And so in that situation, it could vary depending on what the values for the Ka and the Kb happen to be. So in this case here, where we say it depends on that Ka and Kb, whichever has the larger value, whichever K value is larger, that will determine whether it's acidic or basic. Okay, so what do I mean by that? So say that I had a Ka value equal to 4 times 10 to the negative fifth, and I had a Kb value equal to 2 times 10 to the negative sixth. So in that case, because the Ka was 4 times 10 to the minus fifth, a larger value, that means that that salt would be acidic. So one other way that you could look at that is just from that qualitative prediction from the weak parents, again, that weak, weak situation. You can remember, we just got done saying that that KW is equal to the KA times the KB. So just the same way how we looked at the concentration of H plus compared to OH minus to determine whether it was acidic or basic, we can do the same thing with the KA and the KB. If the KA is greater than the KB, then I have an acidic solution. If the KB is greater than the KA, then I have a basic solution. And in the rare instance where you have the KA and the KB being equal to each other, then the solution would be neutral. So an example I can give you for this would be if you had a salt sodium acetate, the KB for NH3, is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, the Ka for the acetic acid, HC2H3O2, it is also 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. So just one of those rare instances where the Ka and the Kb happen to match up, and so you'd end up with a neutral salt. Okay, so now let's actually determine the pH for a solution containing an anion. So we have sodium acetate, which is CH3COONA, or as an abbreviation, you can use for acetate AC. So I have NAAC for this particular problem. Has applications in photographic development and textile dyeing. What is the pH of a 0.25 molar NAAC solution? The Ka for acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. So the first thing that we want to do is set up the expression and I'm just going to do it as the proper one to start off with. So I have that going into the water, place the water on top of the arrow. So I have Na plus and that would be aqueous and the acetate ion aqueous here. So again this component that was our strong base this was our weak acid. So we always focus on what was the weak component. So in this particular situation, my main reaction, I'll put that up here, the main reaction that we'd be looking at, I'd have the CH3COO minus plus the H2O. Again, the hydrogen is going to come over here and it will reform the parent acid, which would be acetic acid, CH3COOH and I would be left with OH minus. So in this particular instance, what we end up having is a rice table that we will set up. And I have now my initial concentration, 0.25, zero, and zero. So I'd have minus X plus X plus X. And as we go, so at equilibrium, we would have 0.25 minus X, we would have X, and we would have X. Now, setting up my expression, I would have the KB for the reaction will be equal to the acetic acid times the hydroxide ion divided by the acetate ion. 
And the only other thing that we need to do is calculate the value for KB. So once again, we had KW equals KA times KB. They identified the KA for acetic acid as being 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. So all we need to do is take the KW, 1 times 10 to the negative 14th, divide it by 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, and that will equal the KB for the solution, which is 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10th. Now, obviously, because I have 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10th versus 0.25 for the initial concentration, change in exponents of 9, Again, 2.5 times 10 to the minus 1 for the 0.25. We can make the assumption that x is going to be very close to 0. So we can ignore the minus x. So that would give me 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10th equals x squared over 0.25. I'm just going to multiply both sides by 0.25. And that gives us 1.4 times 10 to the negative 10th equals x squared and when we take the square root of that my value for x equals 1.18 times 10 to the negative fifth power so solving for the pH again this is my concentration of OH minus so if I take the negative log of the value for x That will give us the POH negative log of X, which is the 1.18 times 10 to the minus fifth. That will give us 4.93. And so to solve for pH, remember we can do 14 minus the POH equals pH. So my pH in this case, 14 minus 4.93. That should be 9.07 for my solution. Okay, so we're now going to do a concept check here where we're going to arrange the following equal molar, one molar concentrations from lowest to highest pH. So again, with this here, we want from most acidic to most basic and these solutions. So as I go through, I want to identify first which ones are my strong bases and my strong acids. So I have NaOH listed, so that is going to be easily my most, uh, the highest pH. And I have HBr, that would be found as my only strong acid. So I know that's gonna be my uh, most acidic. So I'm gonna put that over here as most acidic and most oops, most basic so i'll have the naoh and then from here i have a second weak acid and a second weak base so i know that those two would go next so i'd have the hf and i would have the nh3 that would be here and now i have a third weak acid or third acid excuse me where I have the HCN now for this one comparing HF to HCN I would have to compare Ka values so the Ka here is approximately seven times ten to the negative four versus the um, HCN which is somewhere around six times ten to the negative tenth so obviously seven times 10 to the negative fourth, a stronger acid. So I'd have the HCN here. So that now takes care of this, 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 and this. So I have three salts that I have to take care of. So what I need to do again is identify whether the salt is acidic or neutral or basic. So for my first salt that we have, the NACN, we know that for the NACN, we have a strong base, the HCN, obviously a weak acid, strong base, weak acid. I know that is going to be a basic salt. So I'm going to place the NACN over here. The NACL, Na from NaOH, 
CL from the HCL, strong acid, strong base. So I know the NaCl would be a neutral salt. So I'll put that here. And then that leaves us with the NH4Cl. NH4 coming from ammonia, NH3, weak base. Cl coming from a strong acid. So that would be an acidic salt. So I'd have NH4Cl listed there. So the only thing that you would have to do for any of these, for the two weak acids, you would have to compare their different uh, Ka values in order to determine which one would be weaker. And if they gave you two weak bases, you would have to do the same thing. So now let's consider a 0.3 molar solution of NaF. The Ka for HF is 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. So the first thing, again, I want to write out my reaction. So I have the NaF that is going to go into water and I would have Na plus and F minus ions. This is a completely soluble salt because of the sodium being a alkali metal. So I know it will completely dissociate into Na plus and F minus ions. So the major species in that solution I would have would be Na plus, I would have F minus, and I would have H2O. Now the NaF, why would that not be considered a major species? Because again, it is completely soluble. So it will 100% dissociate. Again, strong electrolyte. Okay. So as far as possibilities for dominant reactions. So if we look at some of the possible reactions, I could have Na plus plus the H2O going to NaOH and H plus. So that would be possibility number one. Possibility number two, I could have F minus plus the H2O forming HF and OH minus. And we have a third possibility because we have water as a dominant player. I could have H2O plus H2O forming H3O plus and OH minus. So when we're looking at these different reactions, trying to decide what could take place, again, knowing that this first reaction involves Na plus going back to NaOH, which we know is a strong base and will 100% dissociate, I know I can eliminate that as one of the possible choices. Now we have our comparisons. Key thing, I have 7.2 times 10 to the minus fourth. Hopefully you recognize this one, the auto ionization of water. This one here would have a Kw equal to one times 10 to the negative 14th power. So let me go back and rewrite that in red there. It's a little bit easier to see. So again, I would have the Kw equaling one times 10 to the negative 14th. And we need to calculate out what the Kb would be for the solution. So if I took the Kw divided by the Ka that's listed, one times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 7.2 times 10 to the negative fourth. When we look at that, our Kb for this particular reaction would be somewhere approximately around 1.4 times 10 to the negative 11th power. Now, whichever K is larger, that's gonna be the predominant reaction. So in this case, since the KB is 10 to the negative 11th versus the KW 10 to the negative 14th, we know that the second reaction would be the dominant reaction in the solution. All right, so let's do one more example problem. Go ahead, please, and pause the video and try to work this one out. It should be very similar to the previous problem that I did for you guys. But uh, take a moment, pause the video, and then watch what I'm doing here and make sure that you're understanding the concept. So the first thing that we want to be looking at here, again, we have the NaCN. So we need to get that main reaction going in water. So I know that when we place 
the sodium cyanide in water, I would get Na plus and Cn minus. Strong base, weak acid for those components. So I know the ion that I want to focus on is the Cn minus ion. They always give you that clue when they tell you the Ka or the Kb for a particular weak acid or weak base. That's cluing you into which reaction you need to focus on. So in this situation, for my main reaction, I'm going to take the Cn minus, react it with H2O, forming the parent acid, hydrocyanic acid, HCN, and OH minus. So in this particular instance, for my rice table, starting off 0.75 molar, I have 0 and 0. For my C, I have minus X, plus X, and plus X. And finally, for the E, I have 0.75 minus X, I have X and X. So when I begin this problem, the first thing that I need to do is solve for my KB. So I'm going to take 1 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 6.2 times 10 to the negative 10th. And that will give us here KW divided by KA. So 1 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 6.2 times 10 to the negative 10th. That gives us a KB value of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 5th. So 10 to the negative 5th versus 10 to the negative 1 difference of 4, so no quadratic will be necessary. You should virtually never have a situation with a salt where you have to do quadratic, but always like to have that mindset in place. So I have my KB expression being the HCN concentration times OH minus divided by the CN minus concentration. So I can now set that up where I have 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth equals x squared over 0.75. So if I multiply that times 0.75, we get 1.2 times 10 to the negative fifth equals x squared. So I'm going to take the square root of both, or, and that will give us our x equaling point. 3.5 times 10 to the negative third for the molarity. So that will now be my equilibrium concentration for HCN and the OH minus. So that would be OH minus and HCN. So I can now take the negative log to solve for POH, take the negative log of that X value and that will equal 2.45. And then finally, I can take 14 minus the 2.45, and that will equal 11.55 for the pH. So again, 14 minus pOH equaling pH. So I hope you got that answer as well. Uh, please come to class tomorrow with some questions. Um, we'll do a little bit more practice with this stuff and we will um, do a salt hydrolysis lab um, in the next couple of days. So um, again, if you have any other questions, please let me know. And uh, the last thing we'll have to do will be some work on titrations.